Good morning. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. All the songs for today's Mass can be found in the Blue Gather book. Please join in singing number 593, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. You're the Word made flesh. You're the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young men brought to them. He was a ruddy youth, handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for he is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Before me in the sight. 
From the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents sinned. It is also that the works of God may be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no, one, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see his neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Someone said, it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. And they said to him, how were, you, how were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So he went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought the one who was blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed 
and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? There was division among them. And so they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, is this your son who you said was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, we know this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, for he is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if, a, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what, do, what did he do to you? Did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, we are not, we are that man's, you are that man's disciples. We are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, this is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone who opened the eyes of a person born blind, if this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin and you're trying to teach us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that he had been thrown out and found him and said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered and said, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him, the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, Lord, and he worshiped him. Then Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see might see and those who do not, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, surely you're not also blind, are, we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you are saying, we see, so your sins remain. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. I guess the good news in reading this is the fact that what I'm going to tell you is going to be a lot shorter than what I just read. So it's all about a blind man who is bl blind from birth and he sees and a couple of things that come about that's very interesting and you can draw your own conclusions. The first conclusion I dug out of this was the fact that the disciples questioned his parents, were his parents of sinners that caused this. Isn't that interesting? Then as you get further into the story and Jesus spat, spat, spat on the ground with his saliva, cleansed the man, sent him to the river to war, she comes back, he wants to do him homage, and we have the, I'll call it confusion of the Pharisees. They didn't agree. Some said, he was Beelzebub. Some said, well, wait a minute, let's look at this. 
But then they both are all converged on it because then one of them said, but it's on the Sabbath. Can't do anything on the Sabbath, so anybody that would good wouldn't do anything on the Sabbath. So then we have this long history of trying to prove what happened to this person and who did this. Makes, makes for interesting reading. I'd like to back up for a minute and, and share with you something that we, we read or she read earlier from the first reading, we see that Samuel comes to Bethlehem. He comes to Bethlehem to choose the new king from the family of Jesse. And he rejects all of Jesse's son until the youngest one appears and he anoints the youngest one. There's a key saying in that that I think we can hang our hat on a little bit. It says in the scripture reading, not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. That's a mouthful. Do we look at each other the same way? I think in that single statement, the word of God becomes unmasked. It's like the blind man. It comes out of darkness. I have to ask myself as I ask you, when we look at the poor, what do we see? Do we see rundown housing? Or do we see filth in the streets. When we look at the homeless, how about the ones that camped under the arch? What did we see? Well, did we see dirty faces, ragged clothes? When we look at people that are different from us, what do we see? We see people of color, and they treat themselves differently than what we treat ourselves. As was read in the gospel reading, Jesus, who is the light of the world, takes away this, bland, this man's blindness. And in doing so, he challenges us. What does he say? He says, live as children of the light. So I believe our Lenten prayer and our sacrifice should be to serve those that take away us being those people, the blindness, so that we can look into other people's hearts and we can love them as our brothers and our sisters. We should turn our hatred into love, our conflict of life with others into peace, which becomes our death, which we get eternal life from. We should be like the blind man in the long reading. We should be able to see, I can see I believe in God. We look at God's words this day as he proclaims the oneness of humanity. We hear from the first words of Genesis that says, come Lord Jesus, all the way through the book of Revelation. God's word in Genesis announces that all men are created in the image of God, not just some races or some racial types, but all bear an imprint of the creator because after all, the one God breathed 
the spirit into all of us. Not chosen by color, not chosen by size, not chosen by appearance. My brothers and sisters, it's a very, very difficult thing to look at one another past the appearance to actually see Christ in their heart. If you look hard enough, you will see God in all of us. And one would say, that's okay by me. Sometimes people don't want us to see Christ. That's on them, not on you. Your obligation in the New Testament's commandments to love your brother as yourself. You are to see the goodness in that person, regardless if they don't see the goodness in themselves. For what we read was it's not by appearance, it's by the heart. Remember, you're going to be judged by what you do in this world. You have a chance every day to see the goodness in all of us. Please look closely, examine, look at everyone as they are looking at you. Let us profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Trusting in our God to grant us all we need, we make our prayers of petition. For Pope Francis and all leaders in our church, that they may continue to share the light of the gospel with all who are struggling, we pray to the Lord. For government officials, that God will anoint their minds and their hearts so that they may promote the well-being of all who they serve, especially the vulnerable and the powerless of our society, we pray to the Lord. For Jack Robert Schultz, who will be baptized this weekend, may he discover the happiness of being loved by God and feel our prayers of support, we pray to the Lord. For all who are bound by the blindness of prejudice, <laughs> that God will free them from judging others and open their eyes to the value at dignity of each human being, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all those whose lives are darkened by alcohol, drugs, pornography, or any other addiction that may blind them, that the light of the gospel may shatter this darkness and open a path to the living a new life, we pray to the Lord. Lord and For all who have died, And for those who are grieving them, that God will give them eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord Merciful and faithful God, hear the prayers of your people and answer us according to your holy will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 724 in the blue book. 
I heard the voice of Jesus say, Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim. rightly gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Rose, Philippine de Chen, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer to each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
Please join in singing number 493, Change Our Hearts. During the season of Lent, Father Nikolai is offering additional opportunities for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. You can attend either after the 10 a.m. Mass this day until noon or Thursday evening between 5.30 and 6.30 p.m. 
for more details, see the bulletin. There's a meeting Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. in the Parish Center, Room 2, for those interested in helping with the parish mission. Those of you that attended Mass, you met the, uh, the priest that's going to lead the mission. Should be very, very, very good. Also, you see the blue tubs. The blue tubs are not diapers for the diaconate, as I was told this morning. Oh, you need they're, we're not raffling the de them off, and surely, hopefully, at this age, we're not yet needing them. But we are collecting them as we do every season for the little ones. It does make a difference. We also realize that they are not cheap. So by contributing, we know that, that you're giving of the extra or the funds that you do have. We very, very appreciate all that you do for us in this parish as we have experienced the same growth throughout the Archdiocese. Thank you for participating. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing number 590. Christ be our light.